So you want to get a DevOps job so you can make DevOps money? Well, let's go figure out exactly how much that is because you know there's the old saying, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. I'm going to use the site levels.fyi to go through some of these salary ranges here. And I know that you can go to this site too and look at it, but my goal in this video is to take a look at these postings, these jobs, and help you translate what's listed here to what your current experience and skill level is so that whenever you're applying or considering DevOps as a career, you can kind of baseline what the expected salary should be based on you know, some real world observations. So right away, we can see here the median salary is 148,000, which is pretty good. The range that we've got here is 18,000 all the way up to 433,000 and up for the salaries. And I've done a couple things here on the site. So first of all, I filtered it down to US locations because that's where my expertise is. And when we get outside of there, what I know doesn't really translate well and they didn't want to give you bad information. And the other thing I've done is I've sorted by total compensation. We'll start off with it highest to lowest because we got JP Morgan Chase here pulling in at 750K, not a bad payday. But the thing is it's a senior software engineer. And that's one of the things you're gonna find really, really common in DevOps jobs. DevOps, as you're probably aware, is development plus operations. And without going into like the old man telling you a history lesson here, DevOps came to be because development wanted more control over how their code went to production, how it operated. And so in a lot of companies, you'll see DevOps being in the software engineering team versus being in the IT or IT operations team. And that's reflected by some of the titles, you know, senior software engineer, but it's a DevOps role. And actually this exact position is an executive director. I'll say it anyway. I'm pretty sure if you're just getting started in DevOps, you're not looking for an executive director position. I mean, you might be. I'm not going to judge. But the next one down, um, a director level position with a master's degree. The experience here for all of these is pretty common. Like all of these people pulling in the top dollars have quite a bit of experience in the industry. And you can see that in the years of experience. This is how long they've been at this particular position or at the company and what their total experience in the industry is. So these individuals pulling down the big salaries have been doing this for quite a while. Let's flip the numbers here and look at some of the salaries on the lower end, which is where you might expect to be when you're just getting started. Years of experience is great to look at here. A lot of these on the first page have no experience and their entry level positions like this one's entry level at $75,000 and there was a relocation bonus. But the title again here, entry level software engineer, something very important to keep in mind when you're looking for jobs to apply to. Once we break the $100,000 mark, start to see more and more individuals with more experience, which kind of happens a lot in DevOps jobs. A lot of companies that are hiring for DevOps roles, they're just now embracing this. And so it's hard for them to look for an entry level position because they're kind of looking for someone to guide this transition for them and that's reflected in the years of experience. But there's still a fair number here of individuals who have either no experience, this is what looks to be their first job, or they only have a couple of years experience in technology period. One thing that really does stand out to me though, is if you look at the company names over here, you see a lot of big company names like Barclays and Cigna and IBM and Wayfair. These are all really large companies, and I think that's going to be important for you if you're trying to break into DevOps to look towards or look at these larger companies, because it's more likely that a large company is going to bring on someone at an entry level than a smaller company. Now, those entry level jobs do exist at smaller organizations, but I think a vast majority of them are going to be at big companies. So with that information, I think it's 
not unrealistic for you to be close or over six figures for a DevOps job. But one thing that really stands out to me is the number of DevOps jobs available. So I did another comparison here and compared it to like full stack engineer. Whenever I was looking at DevOps jobs in the US on levels.fyi, there were just under a thousand jobs reported. Whenever I did that exact same search for full stack engineer, there were 9,000 jobs reported. So the difference there is pretty pretty dramatic. There's a lot more demand for a full stack engineer than for a DevOps engineer. And the salary ranges were pretty similar between those two. Now levels.fyi doesn't report on like IT jobs, but I did some other searching and compared to a system administrator, the average salary for a sysadmin is about $84,000, $85,000 a year. And so that really highlights the difference between the two because DevOps is kind of that overlapping role between sysadmin and developer. And I think that's why you see like the difference in pay scale there that it's closer to a developer salary than a sysadmin salary because you may not have to write code. You probably will eventually but you should be able to look at, interpret, and understand code because that's one of the common things you'll do is interact with developers who um, their build failed or they weren't able to deploy or the behavior of the application is different out in production than what it was whenever they were developing it locally, which is outside the realm of a typical sysadmin's responsibilities. And so that's the reason there's that pay discrepancy there the expectation, though, is that you can read and interpret the code, even if you can't write it as well as a similarly leveled software engineer. But as I just mentioned, there are a lot less jobs for DevOps than for a full stack engineer. So while the positions exist and there are some entry level positions, um, it may take you a little longer to land that job. But if DevOps is something that you really like doing, because I know I do, I would not enjoy writing code all day long. I just kind of like having that full stack experience, which is a really interesting term that full stack and DevOps are two different titles. And sometimes full stack includes DevOps. Sometimes full stack does not include DevOps, but that's one of those gray areas in there. I guess where I'm going with all this is you can get a six-figure job doing DevOps. Uh, read the job descriptions carefully, and when you're searching, be sure to look outside of positions titled DevOps, especially with the larger organizations because that's gonna be part of their software engineering team. So you'll wanna look for software engineering roles, then include filters to look for DevOps terms like either the word DevOps or CICD or different things like that. All right, hope that was helpful for you. If it was, give me a big old thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, give me a big old thumbs down. And then if you like this, uh, I've got a whole series of videos on like this 2080 rule that I have, like the 20% of a certain technology that you'll use 80% of the time. So I'll link one of those videos up here. I'll link the rest of them down below. Go check those out and it'll help you level up your DevOps skills for that job. So I'll see you in those videos.